and I am going to start start the introduction. Okay, good morning. Hopefully we took care of that. I'm checking to see whether or not those that could not hear me before can hear me now. Can everyone hear us? Okay. So once again, welcome to the One Summer Chicago SYP Green Corps RFP webinar. My name is Lisa Davis. I'm the supervising manager for the youth, youth division and also the manager for the One Summer Chicago employment program. We have several people in the room with us today, and we will do our introductions. But before I do that, if you could, for housekeeping rules, on the side, if you have a question, if you could please type it in. We will try to get to as many questions as possible, but we will also send out a frequently asked questions email to everyone with a response to your questions. I will also send out a PowerPoint, this PowerPoint, to everyone that has registered. So our introductions will start with Julia. Hi, I'm Julia Talbot. I uh, work in the contracts unit and also with, in the policy. Hi, I'm Eddie Jones, and I'm program director at Green Corps Chicago. And again, I'm Lisa Davis, Supervising Manager of DFSS. We also have with us our um, Deputy Commissioner, Brandy Kanazi. Good morning. This is Brandy Kanazi, um, Deputy Commissioner for Contract IT and Programmatic Monitoring. So again, if you have any questions, as it's stated on the RFP, regarding the RFP, you can send an email to myself, Lisa Davis at cityofchicago.org. And you can also send an email if you have questions regarding the administrative aspects of this RFP to jtalbert at cityofchicago.org. I wanted to start with the exciting part. The new things that we have for One Summer Chicago. This year we will have the centralized payroll for our youth wages. DFSS expects to be working with a third party payroll manager to provide summer youth payroll services. This means the respondents who choose the option of working with this payroll manager will not be required to pay youth wages and administrative payroll for youth participants. 
Nevertheless, respondents must provide approved timesheets to the payroll manager in advance of use payment being made. I'd also like to add, this will help us with the agencies specifically that were not able to previously apply because you had to manage payroll for approximately 90 days. This will relieve you of that and the city will take that responsibility and administer the payroll only for the youth. In addition to the centralized payroll, we have the special program for the deferred action of childhood arrival, also known as DACA, recipients through the SYEP program. This will only be offered for the SYEP program. In partnership with Mayor Emanuel's Office of New Americans, the SYP program is encouraging applications from qualified organizations working with and on behalf of immigrant communities in order to better engage and educate DACA students, their families, and communities about administrative relief. Using the SYP Summer Jobs Model, DACA Youth will conduct civic outreach and engagement to disseminate information and educate individuals and families in their communities about the application process for administrative relief provided under President Obama's November 2014 executive action. Again, this program is only through SYEP. And the program itself will also be, as stated, it's a new model for us. It's something that we're very excited about, and we are encouraging all of our organizations that are familiar with DACA to respond to the RFP and assist us in assisting our residents to have this information and provide it to them from our youth. Our One Summer Chicago program has three models. For this webinar, we are only covering two. The three models are SYP, also known as Summer Youth Employment Program, and Green Corps. One Summer Chicago Plus is our third model, which will be covered in a webinar later today. The eligibility for both programs, SYP and Green Corps, is a competitive process and it's open to all nonprofit organizations. You as a respondent may apply for multiple programs or for a single program. If you should submit a, a proposal for more than one, we would need a separate proposal for each model. Respondents submitting multiple proposals must demonstrate the capacity to implement all programs applied for through the RFP. I can say for 2014, we did have agencies that applied for all three, some for two, and some for one. We have a larger number to reach this year, so we are looking for as many respondents to our RFP as possible. Important date, the proposal is due back, March 17th at 5 p.m. Award notifications by March 30th, and our anticipated contract start date, May 1st. I have to tell you, for the proposals due back, please do not start your proposal March 17th at 4 o'clock. Please start your proposal as soon as possible. I do mention that because we have had in the past when you start late and then you have whatever technical difficulties and it's just much better for you to start as soon as possible and to provide as many questions as you may have to us via email. Our pro common program elements, again, this is for SYEP and Green Corps. 
The terms of our contract, they'll run from May 1, 2015 to April 30, 2016. The program dollars are expected to be expended between the summertime of June 1st to September 30th. You will see later on in this webinar why we have it from May 1st, 2015 to April 30th, 2016. Some of our programs allow us, if the funding is there, to extend beyond September. But for the summer of 2015, we are expecting you to expend your funding between June 1st and September 30th. Financial literacy. Financial literacy is always an important part of our summer employment program, and this year we are really pushing it up. We will be asking the youth to do several things that they might not have done in the previous years, so this is an extremely important part for us. We're expecting the respondents to have weekly programs that cover topics such as banking, direct deposit, credit scores, credit cards, student loans, taxes, stocks, savings, and more. The youth compensation for Green Corps and SYP, youth participate in the program for 20 hours a week. Youth will be engaged in 12 hours of paid work experience and 8 hours of enrichment programming a week youth will be paid an hourly wage of $8.25. Can we see if they raise their hand? Excuse me. Payroll system. Agencies will manage payroll or enroll in the city's new centralized payroll program through a third party. We will go into the payroll system further on in the webinar. M monitoring youth performance. Monitoring the youth performance, this includes weekly reports, tracking progress, daily attendance, and meeting summaries entered into the DFSS data tracking system, better known to us as CitySpan. For those of you that aren't new, you're very aware of city stand, and it is still here. Common assessment tools and the curriculum. Agencies will administer employability assessment tools, post-program surveys, and the Human Achievement Quotient, also known as HAQ, for each youth. We will have several surveys that we will be doing throughout all of our program models this year. Data collection reporting and record keeping. Not that one is more important than the other, but this is extremely important, especially if we're doing the centralized payroll. Respondents must maintain individual case files accurate documentation, worksite information, time and attendance, and a final report. In addition, if respondents are provided the opportunity to work with a third-party payroll manager, approved timesheets need to be provided in advance of any use payment being made. Youth preparation and meaningful workplace participation. Respondents must provide an orientation, meaningful work sites, and exposure to career paths. Now, where we have the part of meaningful work sites, I don't know about you, but in the past, many, many years ago, SYEP had work sites that were not necessarily connected to career paths. This is not your old SYEP. We need work sites and uh, employers that will provide valuable employment work sites for our youth, something so that they can figure out what their career path will be and to understand 
when they have an idea of what it is, what it will take for them to pursue that career. So on our worksite employer criteria, employers should be willing to adhere to the program guidelines, capable of tracking time, provide adequate supervision. Youth employment should not impact the current employment, contracts, procedures, and hiring, firing decisions of the worksite. All youth for this program, for all of our One Summer Chicago programs, must show proof that they are a Chicago resident. They need to have a valid Social Security number and a signed card. Everyone must have a completed online One Summer Chicago application. So please help us in getting the word out for all youth even if they say, well, I will not be here this summer, please tell them, sign up. If you're not here, fine. But if something happens and it falls through, if they are not signed up, they cannot participate in One Summer Chicago Employment Program. So now we will start with SYEP, Summer Youth Employment Program. The basics for SYEP, this program targets all youth citywide. Youth do not need any barriers to be a participant in this program. It is a six-week paid work and enrichment program for ages 16 to 24 for six weeks, which includes financial literacy, job development workshop, and enrichment programming. The anticipated range for this award is between 60,000 to 200,000. As I mentioned previously, the special program for deferred action for childhood arrival recipients. I'm not going to read this again. We'll leave it there for a few minutes and it will be included in the PowerPoint. Again, with everything, if you have any questions regarding this or any slide, please either send an email or you can put your questions in the question box. SYP, this program has coaches. Our other programs have mentors. They are very different. For SYP, you as the respondent, you are responsible for hiring, training, and matching the coaches with the youth that are in your program. The coaches should be between the ages of 20 and 24. All coaches need to apply online the same as the other youth for the one summer Chicago application. The coaches are paid $8.25 an hour for 20 hours for six weeks. They are paid for the entire 20 hours. Their wage should not exceed $1,000. They are also eligible to be paid through the third party payroll manager. Now that is very important because the coaches can be paid through the third party centralized payroll. But in Green Corps or any other program, if the word mentor is attached to the person, they are not eligible to be paid through the third party payroll manager. We will go into that further when we get to Green Corps. All of the coaches are mandated to have background checks which we at DFSS will pay for, but it must come through our background group. You cannot get your own background check and then give us the receipt. They have to come to us and we will send them to our person for the background check. 
We encourage for all coaches to be fluent in the same language as the youth and the families in which they serve. An overview of our program design. The youth orientation will provide information on program requirements and their expectations. The orientation should, excuse me, consist of one day or two days work readiness skills training during the first week. This is for us to at least have a short amount of time that you can do a boot camp of job readiness before you send them out into the workforce. Worksite matching and monitoring will, will be 20 hours a week for six weeks. Ensure that worksites employing over 20 youth will have a designated supervisor specially assigned to that group. Assist youth in identifying their career interests. Match youth to an appropriate work experience based on their goals, interests, and work site job needs. The SYP youth, the number of youth per respondent, we're asking that you have at least 100 youth between the ages of 16 and, 19, 16 and 24. Include requested number. This is what you should have requested in your application. On the youth selection, if you are awarded, we have what we call the 60-40 split for SYP. At least 60% of the youth will be randomly selected from DFSS. We pull from the application. The remaining 40% you as the awarded respondent can identify those 40%, but they too must have an application online with One Summer Chicago. Youth location, we need to employ youth from all over Chicago. So I need the agencies or the respondents that are awarded to be able to identify at least four regions that you're able to serve. It is understood if you're on the south side that you may not be able to serve far north, but we have to cover all of Chicago, and depending on the number of respondents that are awarded, you may have certain community areas that are up north where you will receive youth. That is to be discussed once you're awarded your response, your, uh, your award for the program. Our goals. Normally when we look at the goals, everyone figures, well, of course you want 100% in everything. Yes, we do want 100% in everything, but the goals, they're, they're really extremely important and, and they really need to be paid close attention to. What we're looking at is 100% of the assigned youth will complete the orientation during the first week. 100% of the assigned youth complete a minimum of the financial education modules that we will provide related to understanding their paycheck, issues related to check cashing within the first two weeks of the program. 100% of assigned youth placed by agency in summer work experience within the first week of the program. Of the youth placed, 90% will complete the full six weeks of the subsidized work experience. 90% of enrolled youth will successfully complete the total plan program hours of 120 hours. 100% of the SYP coaches and worksite managers will complete the employability assessment with all youth and provide feedback to youth about their performance at the worksite. The employability assessment, the surveys that we will be giving out, 
These are extremely important and they help us every year on how to improve on the programs that we already have. It is very important for us to hear from the youth and from the employers through these surveys. 100% of the youth will complete the financial literacy component, which DFSS will provide to you. Right now, I am looking at some of the questions that we have. So if you could give me one minute. In regards to the question, if an agency is interested in implementing the SYT DACA model, not the standard SYT, can they propose to serve less than 100 youth? The answer is yes. Stand by, we're going to try to pull up another question. Okay, let's see. One question. Are only nonprofit organizations eligible to apply? or may for-profit organizations also apply. You must be a nonprofit. Another question. Are there any guidelines for SYP orientation other than the time frame in which it must occur? There are guidelines. We do, or we will, my apologies, we will let you know what the orientations must include. You can also add to whatever it is that we uh, list out as to what it will be the minimum requirements that you need to provide in your orientation. Another question was, do coaches count in the 100 youth served total? Yes, the coaches do count. I'm going to move to the next slide. We will also have someone typing in certain uh, answers to your questions. SYP services recap. SYP respondents must complete the following components of the program. Develop appropriate summer jobs for, for youth enrolled. Provide job training and enrichment experiences for the youth. Facilitate youth completion of the financial literacy curriculum. Hire and supervise qualified coaches to work with your participants. Promote and coordinate any additional support services to ensure that the youth complete the program. 
I'm going to go back to the last one where it says hire and supervise qualified coaches to work with youth participants. Every year we have the question, what are the coaches' responsibilities? We can suggest the coaches' responsibilities. It is up to the respondent agency to determine what the coach will do. One of our suggestions for this year, if you are participating in the centralized payroll, to have the coach pick up the timesheet or collect the timesheet from the youth and help to, administer, help to input the data into the system to make sure it is done in a timely manner. Your coaches can be used as administration. So we have next, um, I'm trying to see where I left off, sorry. Promote and coordinate any additional support services needed to ensure that the youth complete the program. As we all know, when you work with youth, you could be working with them for one thing specifically, but you will find out many more things about them. The youth may need assistance in having, uh, their, getting their uniform or having a uniform, having the appropriate clothing to complete their employment. They may need assistance with child care. Uh, it could be several things. We are also still here as a resource where you can come and ask us for any assistance and we can possibly direct you to where it is that you can get the assistance from. But as long as you do understand that we are also looking to you to provide any additional support services. You'll be managing youth participant payroll data, entering data into the DFSS data management system, aka CitySpan, complete the youth assessment tools, track and report daily attendance and collect timesheets. Create meaningful enrichment programming to enrich to enhance the job placement success. If you notice on our recap, we have several things there regarding payroll, entering data, timesheets, daily attendance, because of the importance, as you well know, that when you want to pay the youth, you need to have all of your information in the system. And if you choose to use the centralized payroll through S, um, DFSS, surely we are going to stress that as well. We will have a timeline and a time frame as to when we need all of our information in the system to ensure that your youth are paid in a timely fashion. Now we're going to discuss the Green Corps program. Let me take a moment first to look at some of the questions that we had under SYEP and also to let you know that the centralized payroll slide is after Green Corps. Will you be, I'm sorry, the question is, will you be paid for 20 hours and also where there, will there be any unpaid hours like last year. Youth will not be paid for 20 hours. Youth will be paid for 12 hours of work experience, of work that they are um, performing, and eight hours, which is unpaid, where they will receive training, job readiness training, workshops, uh, financial literacy, and other enrichment programs. The same as last year, George. Another question, will there be a different curriculum for coaches? 
I'll try to answer that as best as possible, because I'm not sure about the curriculum component. But for our coaches, they, they are considered youth. There is no curriculum. They do not have to do the financial uh, literacy modules with EverFi, as we did last year. But they are very much so welcome to do it. I would encourage all of the youth to participate in the program. But the coaches are really yours to utilize what best fits for you. The question is, will bus passes be provided to youth? We are still in the process of working with Ventra in regards to the bus pass concern. I can say that last year, SYP, we did provide bus passes to our youth. We're still working on that. And as I said, we're working with Ventra, and we will know before the program starts. We're going to move on into Green Corps. Green Corps Basics. The Green Corps Youth Program is a collaboration between DFSS, CPS, and CDOT. Green Corps is an intensive six-week summer youth learning program designed to provide youth with experience in two primary educational modules. The two modules are horticulture and biking. I will say for Green Corps, this is our only program where we are collaborating so closely with a sister agency and another city agency. Green Corps, as it states, the horticultural component, careers in landscaping, urban agriculture, tree care, ecological restoration, and biking. They learn the safety of biking, how to repair bikes. They receive a bike in a box, so they will assemble the bike. And they will ride uh, along the city, the city uh, streets of Chicago to get to and from for our gardening programs or other programs that are set up through Green Corps. Pending funding, this module may also provide ongoing experience and educational support for a subset of youth throughout the academic year to continue to build knowledge and skills in these areas. The anticipated award amount is between $150,000 and $400,000. Green Corps Youth, the application selection process. This is a little different than our SYP. Youth will be recruited for participation from specific high schools and throughout the communities of the city of Chicago. Successful respondents will be responsible for collaborating with DFSS, CPS, and CDOT, also CDOT known as Green Corps, to recruit the students in the selected schools to participate in the program. The agencies that work under the Green Corps, you will work closely with the schools in the beginning to help them with the recruitment. Green Corps is looking to recruit students that are disengaged from school, meaning truancy, or their grades are dropping, or the school realizes that Billy is, is uh, becoming 
more disengaged from school. He may be here physically, but we are not uh, um, addressing all of his needs. There's something that, that they need to re-engage him in, into school and to find out what it is. Green Corps will have the school's um, selection, which we do not have now, but we're working with CPS to get the schools that we will be working out of for this program. Green Corps will have 900 youth this year, which is the same as last year. What is different this year for Green Corps is we are having youth starting at the age of 15 to 19. And the youth must be in school. As you know, if they are 15 years old, for this group, you will have to make sure that they have their working papers. And we are working on a process with the state and with CPS to streamline that as much as possible. We will not have 15-year-olds and 19-year-olds in the same grouping. Later on in the program, once you are awarded, we will go further into details as to how they will be separated out. Green Corps program design. As all the programs, we will have an orientation. And in the orientation, we are looking for you to provide the youth with information on program requirements and expectations. Project-based work experience will monitor and monitoring will include eight hours of education and 12 hours of practical application of the skills in project-based settings. This is very much so similar to SYEP. They will be paid for the 12 hours. The eight hours are for Green Corps instructional. As we stated that they will receive the bike in a box. They will have instructions before and then after when they actually perform the um, uh, activity. That is where Green Corps, the 8 and the 12 hours are somewhat intertwined. But we are paying them for the 12 hours and 8 hours they will receive the financial literacy and um, in enrichment programming. Provide classroom instruction on horticulture and bikes for a minimum of 8 hours per week. Participate in all curriculum experience based on a schedule designed by Green Corps. Green Corps will provide you with instructors that will provide that, those classroom instructions. Green Corps will also provide you with all of the supplies that are needed to implement this program, which means bikes, helmet, uh, the gardening tools, t-shirts, hats, gloves, any of the supplies, Green Corps will provide it. For the Green Corps mentors, remember they are different from the coaches. The mentors must be at least 24 years of age. In addition to that, the mentors must know how to ride a bike. And they should have been riding a bike for a while. Not I know how to ride a bike and the last time I rode a bike was two years ago. No. They have to be very skilled in riding a bike. They will be leading our youth throughout the streets of the city of Chicago. I stress this because there's always one or two that does not know how to ride a bike. 
So, the mentors are required to participate in DFSS sponsored curriculum training, peer support sessions, and support the goals and requirements of the university-based program evaluation. Green Corps mentors receive the most training in all of our programs. The mentors will be hired two weeks before, the two weeks before? I'm sorry, I'm listening, I'm looking at my partners. <laughs> They're hired two weeks before the program begins and they will receive intensive training. The wages for the mentors are not to exceed $20 an hour. These mentors, they are not eligible to be paid under the centralized payroll. We will pay and manage the youth. You will manage any other staff in this program. Our mentors are expected to be available to the youth 24 hours a day, meaning by phone. The mentors will develop a relationship with the youth, and if the youth is in a situation and they need to speak to an adult, Several times we had it where they will call on the mentors. So the mentors must understand that they will be sharing their cell phone number with the youth. Agencies are responsible for costs associated with background checks. Unlike SYEP, I do not pay for the background checks of the mentors that are making $20 an hour. We're requesting that the mentors are fluent in the same language as the youth and the families that they are serving. We're also putting a preference on that the mentors are from the same community as the youth. If at all possible, we encourage that at least half of your mentors are coming from the schools in which we're working from. This way, there's some continuation between the youth and the mentors, even after the program ends and school begins. Green Corps performance goals. Before I go any further with Green Corps, let me check the board to see if we have any Green Corps questions. It says the question, will there be multiple agencies at a single school? We have never had that. At one school, we have one Green Corps program. Now the school may have their own programs there. So you may see other agencies, but they will not be a part of our Green Corps program. Let me see if I can find another question. Will bus passes be provided to youth? I don't know if that one is for Green Corps or SYP. I can say for SYP, last year we provided bus passes to our youth. For Green Corps, we provided bus passes for two weeks. This year we will follow the same model. Whatever we do for SYP concerning bus passes will be the same thing that we do for Green Corps in regards to bus passes. And we are working with CTA in regards to possibly discounted bus passes. Green Corps performance goals. 100% youth placed in available Green Corps youth program slots to, comp um, I'm sorry, I stumbled here because it reminds me to mention to you that last year for Green Corps, in your orientation, you really need to explain to the youth what it is that they will be doing. 
actually before the orientation when you're communicating with the youth, if you can explain to them that Green Corps means you will be riding a bike, sweating, exercising, and you will be working in gardens, dirt, worms, those things that some of the young ladies and some of the guys decided in the second week they did not want to do, or they didn't realize that was what they would be doing, so they say. But it's very important for you to stress that so that they understand all parts of the program. 95% of enrolled youth will successfully complete the total plan program hours. 95% of enrolled youth will complete the financial literacy curriculum. The Green Corps group, unlike SYAP, they will be working together as a team. Since they will be located within the school, they will have access to the computers. Our financial literacy program is all computer-based, web-based. So there will be time which will be set out for them to complete the financial literacy and go visit financial institutions, which we will work with the treasurer's department to have access to. 100% of the youth will demonstrate increased knowledge of horticultural, bikes, energy efficiency, and employment related to green industries. Green Corps will have a survey, a pre and post survey, which will allow us to find out whether or not they are or did learn more than what they knew when they first came into the program. 100% of mentors and instructors will complete the assessment with all youth and provide feedback to youth about their performance. 100% of the youth identified for the 45-week extension, if funding permits, the program will complete the total plan. The, the program, I'm sorry, I'm, I can't read all of a sudden. 100% of youth identified for the 45-week extension program will complete the total plan program. We have a question. The question is, are mentors giving a cell phone for Green Corps? Does the agency pay the cell phone bill? Are the mentors paid for mileage? First part, we are not giving the mentors a cell phone. Second part, we are not paying the cell phone bill. Third, are the mentors paid for mileage? DFSS is not paying for their mileage. And actually for that entire question, there is an administrative fee that each agency is given. If you choose to pay your mentor's cell phone, the bill, and mileage utilizing your 15% admin, that is up to you. You can use your admin any way you want. But DFSS will not make a budget line for that. DFSS tries extremely hard to provide all of our funding, or as close as possible, to go directly to the youth. This allows us to employ more youth and provide the program to additional youth. This year, the mayor is asking us to employ 24,000 youth. Last year, we employed 22,500. So again, our funding that we receive, we try very hard to have majority of that funding to go directly to the youth. And I say majority because for Green Corps in particular, we do have to provide funding for our mentors and the supplies that they receive. 
I'll take another question. Do the mentors need to provide their own bikes and helmets? I'm going to let Eddie answer that. No, all of the will provide bikes that will also be built by the youth or the mentor if they want to participate, but it will be the same bike that the youth have. So we do purchase enough for the mentors to share a bike morning and afternoon sessions just the same way the youth do. So helmets, safety vests, anything needed to be on the road, the, uh, the bike kits, the toolkits, all of that are, are provided. Okay, let's see if we can find another question. The question, 100% youth completion of an extension program is a difficult one. What if a student moves away, is suspended from school, decides to get a GED instead, or is incarcerated. Oh. We are talking about high need youth. Yes, we are talking about high need youth. And I know it is not easy. By all means, I know it is not easy. But that's what we're going to strive for. I, 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 it, I would be missed if I said we're going to strive for 75 or 80 percent. And if they were to go into a GED program, that's not a reason for us to drop them. We can continue uh, that use in the extension program. But I understand what you're saying. Another question we have, do you prefer that we recruit mentors who are alumni of the high school served or who live in the neighborhood served by the high school? Good question. And you know, we've never actually addressed that, but that would be interesting if the mentor came from, let's say, Kenwood. And we happen to have Kenwood as one of our schools. We wouldn't discourage it by no means. My eyes are so bad. One second. Then the other part of it says, uh, who live in the neighborhood served. We would like for the mentors to come from the neighborhood in which the youth will be working at. That would be very important to us, and they will serve as a resource for us, because we don't know what is actually going on in the neighborhood. If you live there, then you can tell us, this may not be a good route to go today because yesterday something happened. You can share that experience with us and have an understanding as to what will be best for our youth. Next slide. A recap on Green Corps. Green Corps respondents must complete the following components of the program. Implement project-based program in urban agriculture, horticulture, and bikes for enrolled youth. So again, we do provide you with the curriculum and the instructors are coming highly trained from uh, CDOT and Green Corps. Recruit students from identified high schools to participate in the program. Once we learn which schools we are um, working with, we try to match the respondents with the school, especially if you already have a relationship with that school. Provide educational and enrichment experiences for youth. Hire and supervise qualified mentors who will work with youth participants. 
promote and coordinate any additional support services needed to ensure that youth complete the program. And once again, that's the same as with SYP. As you know, when you're working with youth regarding one concentration, there are several other things that you will learn about those youth. And to provide them with that support is very important for us. Last year in our Green Corps program, we had several incidents that took place not in our program and not during our program hours, but our youth were exposed to it. So the following day, the CPS uh, support system provided them with counseling services, and the agencies worked very closely with them to provide whatever support services were needed. Support youth in completing the financial literacy program. Keeping in mind that this is a group that they are not necessarily going to school every day. Uh, some of them do have low reading score levels. We will provide you with several options for the financial literacy on various reading levels. Enter data into the DFSS data management system, also known as City span. Uh, complete youth assessment tools. I don't know if I mentioned before, and if I did, it, it just helps for me to reiterate it. Green Corps has a lot of surveys. This program is looked at closely from several of our providers. Because of that, they all have surveys and questions that they want answered. So Green Corps does have quite a few surveys, but as I said, Green Corps, the groups, you work as a team. You are always with this group. They are not sent off to an employer to work and come back to you for eight hours of um, financial literacy. Track and report daily attendance. And you will track and report that attendance in CitySan. Contingent upon funding, develop and implement a 45-week academic year work experience in green industries in collaboration with instructors from Green Corps and CDOT. I can tell you the first year, our extended program, we had several youth that went on to work at Divi. We also had a couple of agencies, approximately five, that worked with us, and they had their youth, and they did several projects that included solar panels, um, rebuilding antique bikes, the Schwinn antique bikes, uh, creating sound systems, going back to record players, uh, just doing several projects. They're not all just dealing with horticulture. Green Corps is very much so has embedded the STEM program, science, technology, engineering, and math. And we add in the art, so our STEM equals STEAM. Payroll. Respondents choose to pay and administer youth wages and seek reimbursement must demonstrate the ability to support payment of youth, youth wages for a minimum of 90 days. Basically, that's saying if you choose to opt out of the centralized payroll, you need to let us know in your RFP that you are capable of managing their payroll for at least 90 days. All programs will operate on a reimbursement basis. Respondent manages their own payroll, manages their own payroll, have adequate and available resources to meet program and payroll for all staff. 
Respondents opt for centralized payroll, have adequate and available resources to meet program and payroll for all staff. If you notice, it says the same thing, but the bottom part, excluding the youth. Opting into centralized payroll, we will manage and pay the youth. For SYP, that includes your coaches. It does not include your mentors and any of your personnel. We have a question. Does the anticipated range of award include youth wages? The actual award, if you opt into centralized payroll, will tell you what your total award amount is and then the amount that you're able to voucher for is based on the fact that you will be opting into centralized payroll, so you will not be getting those funds. So the award ranges listed in the RFP include youth wages? Correct. But I'm, I'm actually going to ask Ms. Brandy if she could say that again just a little louder. So when the contract awards are made, on the award notification, we will tell the delegate agencies their total award amount. And if you have, if a delegate agency has selected to opt into the centralized payroll system, we will tell them their actual award, which will be less minus the amount of the youth wages, because we will not, we will be paying, the city will be paying for the youth wages. So their award will not include that. I thank you very much. We have another question. Does the agency have discretion to propose to pay the Green Corps mentors less than $20 an hour? Is there a minimum mentor salary? Can the eight, well, let me first start with the first question. You can pay them less than $20 an hour. We will give you the funding to pay up to $20 an hour. But if you choose to pay them less than $20 an hour and you are not including the difference, say, in their medical or fringe, I don't know where you would put it where it's still somewhat in, included in their payroll, you cannot use that difference to, say, take a, do trip. All money that is not used, that is allocated to you, must be sent and sent directly towards the youth. Then the second part says, is there a minimum mentor salary? That is to be decided. I, I, I want to say there is not a minimum, but I also want to say you cannot pay your mentor. I strongly suggest you do not pay your mentor $8.25 an hour. But you can pay them up to $20 an hour. Then the second part of the question, I can't see it. I unfortunately lost the second part of that question, but I can, when we uh, pull them up at the end, I can include it in the frequently asked questions. So while we're looking for that, still on the payroll slide, all respondents must maintain general liability insurance, and workers' compensation coverage for all youth employed through the program. Can I say one more thing about the centralized payroll services? So the benefit of this program is that delegate agencies will not have to um, front the capital necessary to make sure that the youth are paid on time because that's what our goal is, to make sure that youth are paid in a timely manner. So if you opt into centralized payroll, your delegate agency's name will still be posted on the checks. 
you will still be responsible for the W-2 processing. So everything will be the same. The control that you'll have, the only difference is instead of your agency running the cost to make that payroll and waiting to be reimbursed, the city will do that for you. Thank you so much. We found the question. And the third part to it says, can, can the agency propose an administrative assistance as part of the Green Corps staff budget? You can, in your RFP, include an administrative assistant with the understanding that comes from your 15% admin that we provide you with. As stated, your 15% admin, you can use it any way you want. If that's what you choose to do, that is fine. I just realized, I thought this was Jay. Hello, Jay. <laughs> Then we have another question. <clears throat> Will the mentors hired for the summer program have the opportunity to also participate in the 45-week extension program? My initial thought was good question, but I, I hate when people say that as to say, well, the other ones weren't good. All the questions are good. Um, we encourage, if at all possible, if you are uh, awarded and we do receive the funding for the extension, it would be great to have the same mentor continue on with that group. So then that whole stage of getting to know you between the youth and the mentors is eliminated. Let's go to the next slide. I believe it's centralized payroll. Yes. <sighs> Centralized payroll option. Respondents may be provided with the option to utilize a third-party payroll manager contracted with the City of Chicago for handling the youth wages. GFSS anticipates this service will be offered as an option for successful respondents in order to alleviate the burden of having to pay for and manage youth payroll and having to wait for reimbursement. I tell you, Brandy did not know that was the next slide, but that's basically what she just covered. Respondents will be responsible for entering the work hours for the youth employees into the payroll manager's payroll system and approving those hours. It is important to note that the youth employees are employees of the respected respondent, not the city of Chicago or the payroll manager. Therefore, you will assume all employment responsibilities and liabilities for the youth. I don't know if um, Brandy wanted to add anything there or to reiterate. Well, I think the main point of that last bullet is just, again, remembering that these students and these youth are employees of your agency, not the city of Chicago. So again, at the end of the year, when it's time to do W-2s, those W-2s will come out under your agency's name. You will be responsible for getting those W-2s to those youth. Um, the payroll manager will give them to you, but you all need to make sure that you keep up with their addresses. Um, additionally, if there's anything that happens to the youth, again, they're your responsibility and they're your, your, your liability. So just kind of keep that in mind as you work through this process with centralized payroll. Nothing changes except the city of Chicago will make sure that we pay for the youth wages and you don't have to be reimbursed and wait um, up to 30, 60 days. Okay, we have a question and it is, what is the justification for a maximum hourly rate of $20 an hour for mentors versus the coaches at $8.25 an hour besides the age? Well, I know you said besides the age, but that's one of the differences. 
The other difference is that the coaches, the coaches are not doing the same, uh, they don't have the same responsibility. The coaches are basically, we thought of them as admin help, uh, uh, staff that will go out to your work sites and collect time sheets. Um, and it's basically administrative uh, duties, whereas the mentor gets very involved with your youth. We are requiring, well, requesting that the mentors have some form of uh, youth development experience. We do put them through training. We are looking at our mentors to make uh, certain decisions while they're out there leading the groups on the bike rides. They, their responsibilities are much more than the coach's responsibility. Uh, we can go into further, I can possibly send you when I do the PowerPoint, the responsibilities of the mentors. It is quite lengthy. So that is what the difference is between the coaches and the mentors. Uh, the question is extension after summer, fall time. The youth go into STEM program, sound system, solar panels. Oh, that's an answer. Well, wait a minute. Let me see because it, it ends with a question mark. Hold okay. on. Extensions for summer, fall time, the youth go into the STEM program, sound systems, solar panels, and building antique bikes is what Ms. Rich stated, correct? That's just one of the possibilities, yes. And just to let you know, it may come up as Ms. Rich, but I'm Ms. Davis. <laughs> but that's okay. I understand. I'm getting accustomed with the webinar. This is my first one. I so prefer being in front of you guys, but this allows me to speak to everyone. You don't have to worry about parking down here at DFSS. ADA compliance. This is in regards to SYAP and for Green Corps. Finding out with SYAP especially that your work site uh, are in ADA compliance. We are serving all of our youth from the city of Chicago, and we must be mindful of this. Your submission instructions. All of your um, responses to the RFP are required to be submitted via cyber grant system. I'm going to leave this up for a few minutes so that you can take down that last person that I'm about to get to, that email, michael.damale at cityofchicago.org. He is our cyber grant guru. If you have any questions or concerns with cyber grants, Please reach out to Michael. The RFP document, registration, application, instruction manuals, and the Youth Workforce Experience Program application, they are also available at the website, the link that you see there. Wow, we're at the end. Well, let's see what questions we have. We have some time for questions. So let me see what we have. Well, I'm blind. <laughs> well, the minimum wage agencies can pay youth and coaches increase when the city of Chicago minimum wage increases in July? That's one of those great questions. No, it will still be 825. There is a clause in the law 
that makes an exception for the summer programming. And I will send that with the frequently asked questions. Question, what happens if performance goals aren't met? You're going to meet them all. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. You're going to meet them all. The performance goals, we understand uh, that there are circumstances. And throughout the program, myself and the staff and our partners are there available to you to assist in any way possible literally any way possible. If you're not reaching your numbers on recruitment, you need to let us know as soon as possible so that we can assist you. These performance goals, they're not just yours. They're ours. We're, we, we do the program together, all of the youth. When you start working with the youth and you are responded, uh, you're awarded, they are my kids. So I need to know in advance when the goals may not be met. But it's not as if we're going to kick you off of the program unless you're coming with like 2%. And that will never happen. Another question. Due to the program being six weeks long, can we split the youth workers into cohorts? smaller groups throughout June 1st through September 30th for SYP. No. No, you can't. All of our youth will start at the same time. The time frame for the youth beginning right now, we're seeing it as uh, about June 29th, the Monday before the 4th of July. So June 29th, counting six weeks out, everyone starts the same time, and everyone will end at the same time. Question, are there requirements for funded agencies to receive a minimum number of youth? OK, one of my partners here sees the question on my face, and you think that means to serve? Are there requirements for funded agencies to serve a minimum of two weeks ago? We would like you to serve about 100. Oh, I see. I didn't say to serve. I'm sorry. Yes, so the question is, I'm always told that I, I can't, and I don't want to say no to too many things. If you have a program where you feel that you cannot serve 100 youth, but you are very capable and sure that you can serve, say, 80 youth. And you submit your proposal. I'm not going to say not to submit it. I will say submit it, provide all the information that uh, is required and all the information to justify why you're saying a number lower than 100. And it will go through the evaluation system. I have a question. Are we able to use the Family Watchdog website for the mentor's background check? For the mentor's background check, uh, it needs to be fingerprinted. I'm not familiar with the Family Watchdog website. That's new to me. I will look that one up. Thank you for the information. But as long as they have fingerprinted background check. Question. Can the financial literacy curriculum be altered in any way? You can add to it. We have several agencies that have done this. They add to the financial literacy uh, curriculum. We, we normally use the EverFi system, and you can add to it. Can I 
Can the in-kind match be donated professional services? Hmm. That's back to that. Don't really want to say no, but but for that one, I'm going to respond uh, when I send out the frequently asked question. I need to get a little more information on that. Question, do the mentors have to be mandated reporters? You know, this is something that we discussed quite a bit. And ultimately, um, we defer to um, ID, the state system of whether the mentor needs to be the mandated reporter. Now, in Green Corps, the all instructors are mandated reporters. That's a requirement. And so that's the Green Corps requirement. Um, so the mentors in Green Corps, we're, we're, that is something, as Julia said, that we really started um, researching this year. And I can get back to you on the answer to that one. <coughs> Question. Do youth wages have to be certain? Has to be a certain amount or percent of the grant award. The youth wages are eight twenty-five an hour, twelve hours a week, a hundred and twenty hours for the six-week period. A uh, question for SYP: Do we have to match the youth with local employers, or can the nonprofit assign labor? In the past, our SYP program, the youth are are matched with various work sites from at agencies that are actually uh, uh, the awards of this grant to the YMCA's, to fast food restaurants, uh, working in banks, working through the city department. So could the nonprofit be the only work like work site? The non for the nonprofit to be the only work site, you would have to justify how you are managing and managing one hundred youth at your work site, what meaningful um, employment experiences are they gaining there? I do understand that we have work sites that are very small, and we also have some extremely large work sites where you may have various locations. So that would be something that you would have to put in your RFP and explain where they would be working. Question. How much will the logistics of the DACA education program model will be designed by DFSS? Will there be collaboration between DFSS and the agencies that are chosen to implement in designing this innovation and exciting program? Hi, Jay. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, you recall last year, uh, your agency did a great job through our Green Corps program. Uh, but we will be collaborating and uh, working with the agencies very closely because it is a, a new program that we will be starting. Question. I want to submit a regular SYP and a DACA, DACA specific SYP. Do we submit two proposals? That's a good one. Because now that it's through Cyber Grant, Jennifer, if I could, uh, 
Um, I'm going to write your name down specifically because we have quite a few questions. But I, I want to address that with Michael Damale. And I will put that on the frequently asked uh, question list. If we opt for the centralized payroll, will this also affect the administrative cost amount? So that answer we will have um, for the administrative percentage, we'll have an answer for that when you do your FAQs. Okay. Question. If working at Walmart, for example, the youth would get paid from Walmart and the agency? Mm. I wish. Uh, I can tell you for us, DFSS, as I said, we do have certain youth that work at um, Walgreens or, or a franchise such as that. As far as we know, we pay the youth. But if you have an understanding with wherever, and they want you to provide them with the youth, and they will pay them, that's something you should put on your RFP. Uh, that is something that we can discuss further. Uh, but as you know, of course, I'm not going to say no to that. And I'm sure you as an agency wouldn't say no. But it is something that I can address that uh, question fully in the FAQ. I'm going to take a few more questions and then I'm going to transfer into the budget portion. Just to let you know, so now we're discussing SYP and Green Corps. After this, we will have Walter Brown come and talk about the budget itself. Then after that, well, let me give you the time. The budget is from 12.30 to 2. And it probably, you know, will last probably 12.30 to 1.30. But we have it till 2. And then the PLUS program is from 2.30 to 3.30. I notice here that it's, it's listed incorrectly. The 2.30 to um, 3.30. So let's see two more questions. On page 8 of the RFP, the Green Corps Mentors to stu Student Ratio is 1 to 15. In the PowerPoint, I think it said 1 to 10. Could you clarify? Yes, I can. I don't know if it said 1 to 10 in the PowerPoint, but we'll give you the answer. The mentors for Green Corps, it is actually two mentors for 15 youth. It is a 2 to 15 mentor uh, ratio. Uh, let's see. What is involved, question, what is involved in the Green Corps evaluation? So the Green Corps evaluation, one, we are uh, reviewing what the evaluation will entail. And it's basically to find out from the pre and post surveys whether or not the youth learned. Learned, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting lost for words. Whether or not the youth have increased their knowledge on horticulture, uh, um, bikes, 
identifying the parts of a bike, um, and actually the you're calling it evaluation. I don't know if I necessarily call it evaluation, but the assessments and the surveys. Did you did you have an evaluation for the mentors? This is the timing. Is that that's what I Oh, we had many evaluations. We had evaluations for the youth on the program. We had evaluations for the, the instructors on the program. Um, but there were other evaluations as well. But the overall evaluation also contained an evaluation of the financial literacy piece and the change in youth habits on anything they were exposed to during the program, so their comfort in their neighborhood, their knowledge, science-based knowledge, their uh, financial literacy-based knowledge, um, anything uh, curriculum-based, so that could include energy efficiency as well, some questions on that. Uh, so it's a pretty wide-range survey that was an overall evaluation, but there were multiple evaluations, so that's a, it just depends what's being asked about there. Yes, thank you so much, Annie. See, it pays to have support. Um, well, that is our last question. I very much so appreciate everyone's participation in the Green Corps SYAP RFP webinar. As I said, at 12.30, we will be back uh, taking care of the budget. We will send the PowerPoint to everyone that is registered. If you and we will post it on our website. Uh, once again, my name is Lisa Davis, the Supervising Manager for the Youth Division. My email, actually, we can go back to say, the first slide or the second slide with our email addresses. So if you want to send us something before, So there I am, Lisa Davis. Uh, go one more, because we include Eddie. Maybe two more. There you go. So again, thank you very much. Look forward to reading all of your great RFPs, your proposals. And for those of you that will be back, we will hear, I was going to say see, but I won't see you. We will hear and read from you in the budget and the PLUS program.